Chapter 15 The last two weeks I was put through my paces by my brother and Kate, both seeming to have made it their mission to ensure that I was ready to become a guard should that be something I wanted. Between the two of them I was always doing something whether it be training with a weapon or being healed up from all the bruises I get getting on top of my blacksmithing and gardening every day was filled to the brim. Having the luxury of an off-duty healer nearby also meant that my brother felt a little more free in roughing me up. This ended with me needing a healing session after every spar, though it all did wonders for my skill, as did haggling with my entire net worth on the line it seems. Name, Ajax. Level, 10. Experience, 9950-10,000. Traits, Child, Divine Witness. Health, 8080ths. Mana, 230-230. Stamina, 200-200. Vitality, 8.86. Strength, 17.03. Endurance, 20.11. Dexterity, 18.77. Intellect, 34.49. Wisdom, 25.97. Mind, 23.06. Perception, 16.33. Stat points, 198. Skills, Common, Frowny Face Mathematics LVL 20, Stealth LVL 16, Drawing LVL 30, Athleticism LVL 14, Running LVL 20, Reading LVL 20, Writing LVL 20, Cooking LVL 14, Sewing LVL 10, Cleaning LVL 10, Haggling LVL 9, Gardening LVL 20, Axes LVL 23, Hammers LVL 17, Deception LVL 5, Sword LVL 7, Shield LVL 6, Bow LVL 7, Spear LVL 9, Throwing LVL 8. Persuasion LVL 4. Uncommon, Frowny Face Meditation LVL 32, Sense Mana LVL 31, Expel Mana LVL 31, Sprinting LVL 11, Mining LVL 9, Lumberjack LVL 9, Smelting LVL 8, Blacksmithing LVL 8, Mana Farming LVL 4, Increase Price LVL 4, Lower Price LVL 6, Chanting LVL 4, Rare, Manipulate Mana LVL 8, Water Aspect Mana LVL 7, Fire Aspect Mana LVL 5, Air Aspect Mana LVL 6, Earth Aspect Mana LVL 6, Inject Mana LVL 5. I was one skill away from hitting level 11 and my stats looked monstrous, normally kids have maybe one stat in the 20s before adding points too if they worked hard. I was barely age 7 so all my stats were still due another 3 points from natural increase, being on track to have all my stats except vitality exceed the 20 mark. Do you think this will be enough? Tom asks me as I lay there getting patched up by Kate, what do you mean? Actually confused by his question. We both know you most likely won't go into a crafting profession, no matter how much mom and dad push for it. They'll likely have you try apprentice at every one in the village before you turn 10 just on the off chance that it you may follow it, so you won't have time to train like this much after I leave. So do you think that we managed to cram enough into these last six weeks for it to be enough to give you a head start? He benevolently smiled down on me. His answer surprised me. How long had he known that I was planning to be a fighter? I still hadn't decided what kind or what I would be fighting, but I knew I wanted to be able to grab my own fate, which couldn't happen if I wasn't strong enough to be able to choose what I wanted. That night, when I asked him to train me I made the plan to grab as many skills as I can before I turn 10 and take the next three years to decide if I was to be a guard or a soldier, maybe an enforcer. Turns out mom and dad would help me with getting me every small apprenticeship to get the basics on all of them. I then got the sudden urge to duck, so I did, Kate palm whooshing right where my head had been. She has been doing that for the last four weeks, claiming it could help me get the prized skill danger sense, but two weeks and I convinced myself she just likes giving me a swipe to the head any time I pissed her off, usually by going off into my own world thinking about different things. Hey! What was that for? I asked the surprised beastkin, did you get it? She gets all excited like a kid on Christmas morning, knowing he spotted the game console hidden in the car after the last shopping trip. To which I just give her a smile and say nothing, something we had long agreed upon being the routine whenever she asked me about my skills, 
and she accepted that I was playing everything close to the vest. A familiar blinking light in the corner of my vision drew my attention. That was something I hadn't seen in seven years, so I pulled up my status to see what was up. Name, Ajax. Level, 11. Experience, 0 slash 11,000. Traits, Child, Divine Witness. Health, 80 80ths. Mana, 230 slash 230. Stamina, 200 slash 200. Vitality, 8.86. Strength, 17.03. Endurance, 20.11. Dexterity, 18.77. Intellect, 34.49. Wisdom, 25.97. Mind, 23.06. Perception, 16.33. Stat points, 220. Skills, common, frowny face mathematics LVL 20, stealth LVL 16, drawing LVL 30. Athleticism LVL 14, running LVL 20, reading LVL 20, writing LVL 20, cooking LVL 14, sewing LVL 10, cleaning LVL 10, haggling LVL 9, gardening LVL 20, axes LVL 23, hammers LVL 17, deception LVL 5, sword LVL 7, shield LVL 6, bow LVL 7, spear LVL 9, throwing LVL 8. Persuasion LVL 4. Uncommon, frowny face meditation LVL 32, sense mana LVL 31, expel mana LVL 31, sprinting LVL 11, mining LVL 9, lumberjack LVL 9, smelting LVL 8, blacksmithing LVL 8, mana farming LVL 4, increase price LVL 4, lower price LVL 6, chanting LVL 4, danger sense LVL 1. Rare, manipulate mana LVL 8, Water Aspect Mana LVL 7, Fire Aspect Mana LVL 5, Air Aspect Mana LVL 6, Earth Aspect Mana LVL 6, Inject Mana LVL 5. After opening my stat, the blinking stopped and a message appeared in front of me. Child Trait has been upgraded by leveling past level 10, despite its restrictions. Trait Child Prodigy gained. Well, that was unexpected, so there was a bonus for doing something like this? I quickly focused on the Child Prodigy trait to see what had changed. Child Prodigy Temporary Trait Status points cannot be allocated. Incremental increase of all stat points by 10 throughout the duration. Stat points do not affect aging. Gaining skills grants experience. Leveling skills grants experience. Crafting experience gain stopped. Killing experience gain stopped. Upon expiration, all stats increased by 2. Upon expiration or removal trait apprentice prodigy is gained for half the duration of any trait with child in the name persistent. Time remaining, 45 cycles. So 2 extra stat points in each section as well as what I think an improved version of apprentice is, this means I'll have to ask what the usual apprentice description is and compare them when the time comes. Hey, don't blank out on me to marvel at your status. Kate exclaims with mock outrage as this time she does lay the light smack on my head before we head towards the house, to have one last dinner together before they leave for the city in the morning, their suspension ending around the time the caravan that arrived yesterday is set to return. I'm going to miss you too, I mention as we all head in the house. Well don't say it like we won't see each other again, Kate cheerily jumps into her chair at the table, I'm sure we'll see each other again before too long. Her mannerisms sometimes really do remind me of a cat, it becomes especially pronounced when she is showing affection, as I discovered while practicing my stealth skill, following them around. I'll see you both in a few cycles, it'll be your turn to show me around then, Judy says, doing her best to keep a cheery mood, despite how much we all know she got attached to Kate in the time she spent here. And she wasn't the only one Alana was about to burst into tears yesterday when she was saying her goodbye. Only her father's proposition for her and Judy to join a caravan in a few cycles for a trip to the city and back to gain experience as merchants put a stop to it. You're welcome back here anytime, Kate, mom, said as she was bringing the food, just you kids, try to be make sure you don't give me any grandchildren before your duty to the guard is done. Her loaded statement caused both Tom and Kate to go red in the face. 
Come on mom, how could you say that in front of Ajax? Just remember that you are 14 now and I am 28, your mother 27, and while I don't and would never regret having you, both of us might have had a much more stable and secure life had we waited until our initial apprenticeships had finished before starting our own family, father sagely nodded. We don't want to control your life, but we do want you to learn from our experiences in hopes your own life could be better, mom said as she took a seat and we all started eating. The next morning, after my brother's departure, I was introduced to the village leatherworker who agreed to try and teach me for a few weeks to see if I had any talent for the craft, much to the dismay of the headman who was dead set on me becoming the village's new messenger. My excuse of not wanting to become a messenger, combined with my denial of getting any skills for any crating job I apprenticed would be my life for the foreseeable future. Chapter 16 For the last two years and eleven cycles I had been a blacksmith at first until my mother could arrange for me to get someone to take me on as an apprentice, two more cycles not much, I was then a leather worker, an alchemist, a farmer, and let me tell that was a surprise not in that there was profession for it, but in the respect that I didn't get any of the skills associated with farming. Before that I got everything, add to that my trait and I thought such a scenario was impossible just goes to show what I know. Where was I, oh yeah my last job, as a butcher proved to be one of the most rewarding in terms of skills, not in so much of what we used since after all it was mostly knives, for cutting and a hammer for some of the bone work. That's not to say I didn't keep practicing the skills my brother taught me or worked in secret with my magic, I just slowed down on both a bit due to lack of time. Name, Ajax. Level, 11. Experience, 2400-12100. Traits, Child Prodigy, Divine Witness. Health, 130-130. Mana, 260-260. Stamina, 250-250. Vitality, 13.27. Strength, 21.60. Endurance, 25.80. Dexterity, 20.90. Intellect, 36.68. Wisdom, 28.26. Mind, 26.87. Perception, 18.63. Stat points, 242. Skills. Common, frowny face mathematics LVL 22, stealth LVL 21, drawing LVL 30, athleticism LVL 20, running LVL 22, reading LVL 20, writing LVL 20, cooking LVL 20, sewing LVL 20, cleaning LVL 12, haggling LVL 19, gardening LVL 20, axes LVL 29, hammers LVL 21. Deception LVL 15, Sword LVL 10, Shield LVL 10, Bow LVL 10, Spear LVL 10, Throwing LVL 10, Persuasion LVL 10, Unarmed, Combat LVL 12, Knives 20, Skinning LVL 10, Tanning LVL 10, Dismantle LVL 10, Uncommon, Frowny Face Meditation LVL 35, Sense Mana LVL 36, Expel Mana LVL 37, Sprinting LVL 13, Mining LVL 10, Lumberjack LVL 10, Smelting LVL 10, Blacksmithing LVL 10, Mana Farming LVL 10, Increase Price LVL 10, Lower Price LVL 10, Danger Sense LVL 1, Leatherworking LVL 10, Alchemy LVL 10, Mana Milling LVL 6, Precise, Cut LVL 10, Precise, Blow, LVL, 10. Rare, Manipulate Mana LVL 15, Water Aspect Mana LVL 10, Fire Aspect Mana LVL 10, Air Aspect Mana LVL 10, Earth Aspect Mana LVL 10, Inject Mana LVL 13, Spot Weakness LVL 4. Upgrades. Precise Blow 9-10. Hammers 20-21. As I started picking up all these skills in order for me not to miss something I added and upgrades at the bottom of my stat page, it wasn't all that hard just took a bit of focus and it now tells me all that changed with my skills since the last time I looked. I got up to go to breakfast, Judy was with Alana on a merchant route, both of them turned out to be very good at it and they were picked up by one of the merchants that had us on a regular route to learn the ropes, they were both planning on moving to the city to try make it big to both the headman's and Johnny's dread. Johnny had a pretty big crush on Alana and when shut down would take a run at Judy, 
though neither would look at him twice. That added on to the things he and Dirk said about my brother and Kate meant me and them got into scuffles pretty often. To the point where Johnny didn't stay over any longer. Yeah, mostly it was me provoking them into giving me a beating so I could practice my healing and get my vitality to rise. Self-harm was not only less efficient, but also something I would have not felt comfortable doing. It led to a pretty robust unarmed combat skill. The surprising part was despite me always picking the fights the village liked me more than Johnny as they took me for being young and dumb and protecting my sister's honor. I wasn't going to look a gift horse in the mouth and just went with it. How are you, Ajax ready to give hunting a go? Mom asked with faked enthusiasm. This was the one part that always left me feeling guilty for days. Seeing the look on my parents' faces when I kept switching what I was doing while telling them it wasn't for me. Luckily, that ended today as I decided hunting was going to be my best bet for training before going into the world at large. The good experience fighting and low oversight of what I kill in the forest should be perfect for me to fuel my growth before I go. I was genuinely more excited to see my parents' reaction to learning I got the skills for hunting than I was for getting them in the first place. I wasn't even worried I couldn't get them like with farming since I already had stealth bows and running and they were all required skills. I have a feeling this will be the one. I know I was optimistic about the others too, but this one really does feel like it would stick. I try to help them with the feeling of helplessness they have over my presumed situation, but the pity in their eyes just deepens. I'm sure it will be son dad tries to go along with it, but he had the same opinion about everything else I tried, though he was right about all but the farming so I guess I shouldn't call him out on it. I put my dishes away and look out the window to see old man Hatchet walking towards the house. I quickly put my boots on, collect my knife, sword and bow, and I'm running for the door. He's here, I'll see you again tonight, I toss a quick goodbye to my parents as I excitedly head for the door. Have a good day out there, Dad says back keeping against hope, a positive outlook on my situation. Be careful out there, Mom calls out from the other side of the house. She always was worried for my safety, this combined with the fact that no hunter owed her a favor was the reason this was my last profession to go for. At least from her way of looking at it, I always thought this was the one to save for last since I would stick with this. As I go out the door, not wanting my teacher to think me lazy and having to go drag me out the house, I catch a glimpse of Johnny talking with Dirk by the smithy, both giving him the stink eye. Five days ago. Hatchet POV. The air was brisk as I walked out the butcher's shop having delivered the deer I caught, the light was almost gone when I heard a scuffle happening from the back of the next house over. And you thought you had what it takes to be a hunter. You'll probably just run up to a bear and get killed, that is if you could even find one willing to take you with him. The voice sounded familiar, but I couldn't place it, I had lived here for a long time, but I mostly kept to myself. Reaching the edge of the house someone bumps into me, it's Dirk the headman's son next to him his loyal dog Johnny, and on the floor a bit roughed up is Arax, I think his name is, hard-working kid though a bit quick to let his mouth loose when it's in his best interest to keep it shut. Looks like he got himself another ass kick. Why someone like doesn't learn I can't fucking put my finger on, he has been doing so for the past three years, with his discipline and determination he should be able to get a handle on that temper of his. Better watch where you're going old, or else the clueless idiot tries cowing me, thinking just because his dad's the headman I'll kiss the ground he walks on. This attitude is going to get him killed in a year or two tops from the look of the arrow grouping I saw on the trees the kid on the ground is practicing on religiously, or else what? I looked down on the short brat with a menacing glare, I didn't let city guard captains intimidate me, I sure as hell wasn't going to let some teen do it now that I retired. Do you not know who I am? He throws me a sneer. I let out a long breath to calm down and move to just walk away. I came to this out-of-the-way place for a calm life. One idiot wasn't worth making it harder for myself. You think you can just run away, he says, grabbing my shoulder, glee in his voice thinking I was afraid and not just too old to deal with shits like him. Now I want to pay him back, but it's not worth the hassle I will get if I give him the beating he's clearly asking for. The I catch sight of the kid's face on the ground, he's looking at Dirk the same way I did before he started running his mouth at me, and I get an idea. 
I'm the lead hunter for the village, see what you dad does to me, for just walking at night, I grunt out to him, before going around closer, to the boy on the ground. Hey kid, you want to be a hunter? Go home see if you can keep your nose out of trouble for four days, and I'll take you out with me. The look of outrage on Dirk's face as I walk away is worth the trouble of putting the kid through his paces. After all I was beginning to think hunting was a bit dull of late. Maybe this will be a bit more exciting. Chapter 17 Hatchet POV I walked towards the blacksmith's house. I didn't know much about him other than that he and his wife came here, quite a few years ago very young and expecting a child and that they were both quite talented in their fields, considering how high they climbed in this backwater while raising a child, then another, and now a third. At the gate I saw the headman's son and his friend both lazing about as per usual. The brat tried to get his father on my case for the incident five days ago, but all he could do to me was ask the hunters to go clear out the stretch a bit away from the village, meaning I had to sleep a night outside, not something that bothered me at all. The kid, Ajax, came out the door, he had his bow on his back, sword at his hip and the dagger tucked behind his back, he then walked up to me clearly familiar with their weight on him from the countless hours of practice he had put in. Thanks for agreeing to take me on. I'll do my best to meet your expectations, he eagerly parrots to me, probably the same phrase he said to each of the people that took him in for a few cycles as an apprentice. Cut the crap kid, we both know I took you on as a spur of the moment thing, so how about we make a deal you try not to get yourself and more importantly me killed out there and I'll try to teach you as much as you can learn about being a hunter, what do you say? I cut straight to it as soon as we are out of your shot of lazy number one and two. Yeah I can work with that, he answers back with a self-confident grin. This was not what I was expecting the old hunter to be like when he agreed to teach me a few days ago, but hey, beggars can't be choosers, and I am pretty sure he knows more than all the rest of the hunters in the village, probably combined. As we head into the forest, the way he walks changes, and I lose track of him, despite looking at him not three feet in front of me. Hey! Keep close and stop standing out, I hear from my left and I instantly spot him before activating my stealth skill and try my hardest to follow in his footsteps as well as keep an eye on him while giving him a nod. We wander the forest like this for a little while. He stops and points me towards a small patch of earth with a few scratch marks in a small pit and the dug-up earth right next to it. Wolf tracks is all he tells me and then starts following what I think must be other tracks the wolf might have left. As he is moving, I am trying my hardest to keep my stealth up, keep track of him and scan the route we are taking for any of the marks he is following. Not too much later, we reach a small clearing in front of a cave that must be used as the den for the pack. With only one wolf hanging around, I take out my bow, and as I move to draw back the arrow, I feel an iron grip on my wrist. The fuck do you think you're doing, kid? He is looking at me, like I am a few marbles short of a full sack. I think we can take it out, I answer, after all isn't that what we came all this way here for, right? Hmm, so bloodthirsty when you can't even gain experience from the fight, take another look at how big the den is, no way this pack is big enough to even attempt to attack the village. He shows me how small the cave is and that there is deer carcass with only one of its legs eaten down by the entrance. In nature there is no such thing as open territory unless it's worthless, we kill these wolves something else, we'll take their spot and that something may have a bone to pick with the village. I can't disagree with his logic and swing my bow on my back, before he signals me to move back and I see him doing something as he follows me away from the cave. He must be masking our tracks, no point to tell the wolves something out here might be hunting them I realize. Not a surprise for your age, but you really need to start thinking about more than just the next step. Getting into those fights again and again, wanting to take out a harmless pack, look at least to what the direct consequences of your actions will be. You got lucky, the village looked at your fights as defending your sister's honor and didn't shun you. I bit back my retort about knowing what I was doing and raising my vitality, unarmed combat skill and proficiency with healing magic, after all from his point of view my head must look hard enough to crush rocks with. Here, see these are good, they also keep you awake, so try not to eat them when you're on your way to turn in for the night, he said, handing me a handful of berries, as well as pointing out the bush he took them from. Careful of the ones that look the same, but come from a bush with round leaves, 
those ones will make you sleepy and sap you of your energy. It's a very bad idea to get them mixed up. I give him a nod and wonder what evolutionary process led the plants to look almost identical but have such a different effect when I spot what I think is a hoof mark and I point it out to him. Not bad, now see if you can find a trail to what made the mark, I'll even give you a hint the foot was pointing in this direction when it made that mark he was pointing towards the right. It takes me a while, but I think I see a pattern in the way the earth is pressed on and I follow it through the trees. As soon as I make it through a bush I hear a resounding crack, as I feel a branch give way beneath my foot. An instant later, I felt a sharp smack in the back of my head. Fuck sake kid, stealth or even if you do track the deer that left this it'll know you are near before you even catch a glimpse of it. His voice sounded fed up, but the small smile on his face gave away the fact that I was going in the right direction and he was happy with that. I ain't proud to say that we moved about as fast as a snail while I tried to track the path of the deer and he also had to point out to me two times that I had lost the patch and move me back a little to pick it up again but a few hours later we finally caught sight of the damn thing calmly munching on grass. I pull out my bow and take aim, I feel my breathing slow my heart rate pick up and I release the arrow. I nail the deer in the neck and don't even get to celebrate as I see it stumble back from the power of the shot before a second arrow hits it between the eyes. Not a bad shot kid hatchet praises me while lowering his bow. Got it right in the neck. Then why did you take a shot, calling him on his bluff? Because animals don't need to wait to gain the power from levels, and while I think the about level 5 deer might have died from that shot it would also have done so from blood loss a couple miles from here and I didn't want to spend another few hours chasing dinner. He gruffly remarks. That wasn't bad tracking there, to find it from this far away, even if you did lose the trail a few times. He was right, and right as I found the deer I had gained the tracking skill. That thought alone made me happy. After all this time I could actually celebrate gaining a skill with my family. I was looking forward to tonight. On the way back, we found some of those sleeping berries, and I picked a bush or two of them and packed them in my, well I want to say backpack, but it's more of a back sack. Didn't you listen when I told you those aren't the ones you want to pick? I swear young people it all goes in one ear and out the other, he mocks me after waiting for me to clear both bushes, for good measure, thinking this is a teachable moment. I would bet money on that. I know, I'm planning to sell these to Mr. Finian, he's been complaining about the merchants bringing sleeping drafts hiking the price on him I smile knowing I can also gouge him for just a little under what they sell. Should have just been a fucking merchant like your sister you clearly think like one, he shook his head but still let out a good-natured chuckle at seeing my smile. Probably figured out I wasn't going to be giving Finian that much of a price break on the sleeping berries. Just make sure to tell him not to eat more than five at a time if he wants to wake up the next morning. You can rip off your neighbors all you want, but I don't want their death on my hands just because you wanted to make some money. The rest of the way back was silent, here you can take this in, you shot it first, he passed me the deer. I guess you could say he wanted to make me look more promising than everyone thought I was, but I'm almost sure he just didn't want to have to take it to the butcher and spend another thirty minutes discussing the price with him. Chapter 18 Walking into the butcher's shop I knew my way around, I had been working here for the past few cycles. Everything was just as I left it, the shop was just barely something that can't be called a mess, with a system to everything's location, just a system I couldn't make heads or tails of in all that time. The only way I know it was a system was that I was told I put things in the wrong place. The hell are you doing only showing up now, kid? He called out to me, as he picked up this habit about a cycle after he took me on to start drinking as the sun started going down knowing I would take care of everything. Never mind, just get here and get to work. I had never liked working here, the skills gained were very useful and I didn't mind the work itself but I couldn't stand Denix as a boss. He was Johnny father and never liked doing something for free. Despite all the times my mom helped him in the past, it took my dad mentioning something about how his son was his apprentice for him to agree to try helping me. I don't work here anymore, sir. I told you that yesterday, I just came by to get this deer butchered. I'm going to be a hunter, and this is my first kill. I felt my lips form into a smirk at my own accomplishment. Denix, however, didn't see it that way. 
Despite how much he complained when he first took me on it seems he not only got used to but even liked having unpaid help around the shop. If you could please butcher it I have to drop Hatchet's share and then get the rest home. Hunting in the village was a bit different than how I expected it, hunters usually went off in pairs. Hatched was the exception before because of his skill, they went off every four to five days outside of hunting season and when they left they went with a food order or scouting order. On a hunting order most of the prey went to the village with the hunter just getting first pick on his share of the haul, but on scouting as usually one didn't find any game on those routes you got to keep all of it. Yeah, yeah I'll get you your share of it in a second calm down it seems he didn't realize that this deer was to be split between me and Hatchet, who graciously said that I could keep most of it to celebrate my first catch, wanting only the back left leg for superstitious reason as he put it. I was on a scouting trip today, I say excitement starting to overwhelm what little patience I had wanting to get back home, to celebrate. I'll be taking all of it back I could feel the shit-eating grin forming on my face, and despite my best efforts I couldn't seem to stop it. He looked grim at that news, clearly the other hunters still came up empty as they had been for the last ten days, this was also the reason why we were sent to scout that specific route today. While the missing game didn't affect the village yet it would soon if things kept going that way. But we found nothing, or I should say I found nothing, and if Hatchet found anything he didn't share it with me. HMPTH, first kill in ten days, and you're taking it all for yourself, kids these days, they don't care for anybody but themselves, he said with scorn, knowing full well it was tradition for hunters to take home their first kill for themselves even if it came from a food outing. He took the cleaver and barely got it to go halfway through the neck with a sloppy chop. The hell is wrong with this thing? He exclaimed, clearly not having expected that much resistance from the carcass. Hatchet said he thought it was level 5, and that that's why it managed to make it all the way onto our scouting route. I answered his most likely question as for someone of his strength and skills even with a sloppy weak strike most of the things we got delivered would have split down the middle. He didn't have to aim careful full blows like I did when I tried to do the same. He kept grumbling things here and there while he worked on the deer, but I tuned him out. After all nothing good would come from him I was sure of it. A short time later I took the nicely butchered deer and went to drop off Hatchet's leg afterwards I headed back home. More than one or two villagers took notice of me, but nobody approached me in the somewhat dim light. As I neared the front door, I could hear my parents talking, but I couldn't make out the words. It took me a full minute to figure out a way to open the door without knocking, but I wanted to see their reactions to me walking in with the game on my back. Ajax is that you, how did it? My mother couldn't finish her sentence as she looked at me with the deer on my shoulders, surprise clear on my dad's face, but the biggest reaction came from Judy and Alana as both their jaws dropped to the floor definitely worth the time to open the door myself instead of knocking. I got my tracking skill today. Where should I put this? I say giving it my all to maintain a straight face, to make this seem like an everyday occurrence. My sister was the first to come to her senses. What you got there little brother? A deer that happened upon our scouting tack I slip in the information that I could keep all of the spoils I brought home and we wouldn't have anyone showing up tomorrow asking questions as to why I didn't share. That small chat was all the time it took for my mom to regain her composure. She had something that looked like a mirror but I couldn't be sure since I hadn't seen one before in this world but she put it on the table and came to help me put the deer in the cellar where it wouldn't go bad until tomorrow when she would most likely salt it took a small part of a few choice cuts to cook for tonight's celebration and we came back into the kitchen. What is that? I said pointing to the mirror that was turned face down on the table. It's a hashtag percent at hashtag dollar dot. My sister said, the word sounded odd but then again it was probably new and added to the language recently seeing how I hadn't seen one in all these years, they are rather rare in the city, but one of the big merchant companies gave me a big discount on it. I think they want me and Alana to join them after we gain enough experience. I picked it up and for the first time I saw what my new face looked like. Not to sound shallow, but I looked good. I had a strong jaw, high cheekbones, inky black mid-length hair and icy blue eyes with a full beard starting to come in. How come my hair and eyes are different from yours was the first thing that slipped out after I took a look at myself. I didn't, 
T have mother's golden hair like my sister's or dad's brown locks like my brother, not only that all four of them had green eyes. The hair you got from my dad, father told me. He always complained that I got my hair from mother. As for your eyes, they come from my mother, mom, followed up. Now tell me more about this tracking skill you got, did it finally happen? Are you going to be a hunter? There was a bit of fear in her tone as hunting wasn't exactly a safe profession, but it was one that would keep me close to home unlike my brother and sister. Yes, it all started with us tracking a small wolf pack. I explained the whole story of us following the wolf pack, me picking up the deer tracks, yes, I left out the two times I got lost, and then how we brought it back to the village. Looks like all that work you put in every morning with what your brother taught you is finally paying off, Dad, said a bit torn between him having been wrong about me practicing every morning being important and happy that I finally had a path in life I wanted to follow and was somewhat good at. The rest of the evening was spent enjoying the small feast and ended with me going to sleep in my old room and Judy and Alana taking the bigger one. All throughout the night I had kept an eye out to see if there was something more going on between my sister and her friend. Sumi Alana is smoking hot and what would you think about when you were say 15, I am surprised I hadn't started thinking about this sooner seeing how my growth spurt came in faster and I was already 6 foot 6, one of the tallest in the village. Chapter 19 My morning started the same as it always did. I woke up, got dressed, picked up my weapons and headed outside to start my training before the rest of the house woke up. Though I did start with the bow this time and increased the time I put into it, after all if there was a precise cut and precise blow there had to be a precise shot, right? I was just about done with my training and getting ready to head to the smithy to straighten up my arrows and do some maintenance work on my sword and spear when Hatchet just popped up next to me from what seemed like thin air. You kid got nothing better to do at this hour in the morning? He sounded pissed off, like I was wasting something precious, but little did he know I had already spent one childhood playing around and that led to me to deficits I couldn't make up for regardless of the hard work I put in, I wasn't going to make that mistake a second time. I want to be ready for anything I answer back with a bit of indignation in my voice at being rebuked for trying to improve myself. HPMH, listen to him wants to get better. For the next few cycles you're going to be dead weight in any kind of situation. Do you get that kid you'll only be slowing me down, you'll be better off learning to climb that fucking tree than shooting arrows at it, he scoffed at me and took off back towards the village. I'll admit I was a bit flabbergasted at his attitude and it took me longer than I would admit to but I realized, after a bit of cursing his whole ancestry, that the old man was actually trying in his own way to teach me that I should learn to climb a tree, just in case something did happen while we were out in the forest. Why can't he go about teaching me like a normal teacher? I mumbled as I spent the next two hours climbing every tree in sight, the small reward for my hard work being the climbing skill I got after a particular tall tree where I had to jump just to grab onto the first branch and swing myself up the rest of the way. The realization that I was dead weight even after all these years of training took its toll on me. I didn't even think fondly at going to Mr. Finian's house to sell my berries and instead put all my frustration in swinging the hammer in the forge working on my straightening up my arrows. As I was done I realized I was way too close to the forge, the shirt on my back was soaked with sweat and the heat resistance skill I got from a happy accident, years of working in here and one pissed off morning I just got it without even trying. I wasn't yet to the level of sticking my hand in the fire just because of that but I did think about raising it so in the future I could do just that. Even if in this world it wouldn't be something unheard of it would be something that kept me tied back to my old world that seemed to have been just a dream at this point. Walking out of the blacksmith's shirt and weapons in my hand I pass by Alana who seems to have woken up. She looks at me with a strange look on her face, I don't think I've seen her make that face before, so I rearrange my list of things to do, to wash and then breakfast. While I was grabbing my late breakfast mom was teaching Judy how to salt meat so that it would last using the deer I brought it. They both seemed happy to have an excuse to do something together, telling me that while my sister was close to finishing her apprentice trait, she was not quite ready to leave home like my brother did. After eating more than I thought I would need, clearly the climbing had taken a bigger toll on me than I thought it would, I pulled my sister off to the side while my mother went to store the meat. 
What Hatchet said about me only getting in his way still ate at me a little bit, despite me thinking it was just his way of telling me to learn climbing and not a dig at me. Hey Judy, can you tell what the apprentice trait says? I ask her after we are alone, sitting around the table. Why, you'll just learn it yourself in a few cycles anyway, she responds, not knowing that no I wouldn't actually, and this was also a good time to get a baseline for the trait and see how much my improved version meant. It's something that Hatchet said to me today when I was training, he said I would be dead weight for the next few cycles and that I would be better off learning to climb trees than swing a sword. What happens when the child trait runs out? That bitter old man, can't he think of a better way to teach someone? She mumbles under her breath, clearly picking up on his objective, much faster than I did. Well usually we all learn exactly what the apprentice trait does when we earn it, but just to put your mind at ease, I'll tell you now. But you have to promise not to tell mom or dad I told you early, dad takes pride in preparing us for what we are about to go through. A silly little slime appeared on her face as she thought back to her big night and probably to Tom's as she might have stayed till the end back then. All right deal, I won't breathe a word of it I say, placing my hand over my heart as is custom for making a vow. You don't have to take it that seriously, she laughs, slapping me lightly on the shoulder. Anyway, the apprentice trait goes like this. Apprentice, temporary trait. Status points allocated increased by 10%. Aging stopped for the duration. Ease of forcibly increasing stat points increased. Experience earned for doing skill-related activities slightly increased. Ease of adapting to increase in stat points greatly increased. Fertility slightly increased. Status becomes harder to reveal or approximate making appraisal and scan abilities harder to use. Time remaining, 75 cycles. This was quite the reveal one that I looked forward to comparing to my own upgraded version in a little while, but one thing did stick out to me like a sore thumb. Slightly increased fertility slips out of my mouth as I wonder what use does that have? My sister goes a bit red in the face, haven't you noticed, as you stopped growing these last few months? Haven't you started to feel a bit funny? She questioned though, was clearly uncomfortable with the topic. I realized that she was right. It seems that in this world, with the help of this system humans, and I suspect other humanoid races evolved to fully undergo their growth period before looking to reproduction leading to a lesser sex drive in the early prepubescent years and increased growth with a faster end to growth and a higher sex drive, presumably. I hadn't reached that part yet, but I was close, and if it was a bigger sex drive than adolescence I might have a few issues. Ah, uh, I awkwardly said, clearly not a topic for discussing with your sister. Thanks for sharing that with me. The apprenticeship not the other thing I made a mess of the conversation and my sister seems to be looking for a different topic to move on to as I am. Hey, you want to go with me and see how much we can get off Mr. Finian for these berries. They are supposed to put you to sleep and as long as you don't eat too many they aren't dangerous according to Hatchet. I offer her an out. I'll split the profit with you 80 to 20. Why are we still sitting here then? she exclaims while her red face regains her color, a calculating look taking over, with a smirk playing on her lips. And the split will be 75 to 25, and be happy, I let you keep that much for using my services. I don't say anything, despite likely having merchant skills equal if not higher than her own, after all this seems like it will be an enjoyable way to spend time with my sister and I haven't seen her in over 30 days. Plus with her handling the negotiation I won't have to lowball the offer to hide my merchant skills. She'll easily be able to charge twice as much as I would without raising suspicions. How many of these berries you got, and how many does it take to put someone to sleep? She asks me as we make our way over towards Mr. Finian, who is about to become a lot poorer by the look on my sister's face. Chapter 20 Hatchet POV This kid is a born fighter. From the moves I spotted him pulling off and the speed and power he had throughout his training I would say he has all the skills not only unlocked but probably quite a bit above 10. He is a natural born fighter and is wasted on being a hunter in a backwater village like this one. But that is not what I'll focus on, I can see that it's his parents that are trying so hard to keep him close to home, not something unusual when it comes to people so young. With experience you will find that letting go a bit earlier will give them a better chance to grow. The kid has all the signs of being able to go out to the city and join the Adventurer's Guild, 
With all those weapon skills unlocked, he must be at least level 6 no way a group won't pick him up as a porter and he'll more than likely work his way up. A tremor works its way through my whole body at that thought and I am reminded of my own past. Hatchet POV 20 years ago The dark was all-encompassing. Me and Luna, the only ones who managed to even make it out of the warren of whatever that thing was deep in the forest. We need to take a break, and you need to let me take a look at your shoulder, if it's poisonous you could be dying and not even know it, she argued thinking about my potential safety, but I knew better than to stop. Didn't you see the scratches on the wall when it picked us off? Whatever that thing is doesn't hunt by sight or or sound, it hunts by smell. We need to get as far away as we can and preferably over some water, I managed to force out a stern tone out of my tired body feeling like I could collapse at any moment. If only we had taken our time to investigate that this thing had killed off all the other predatory animals this deep in the forest, we would have known to turn back, but having gone five years, without a failed contract or a serious injury, had left us overconfident, a group of fifteen adventurers, and only the scout and the healer make it out. Hatchet POV the chances that this kid actually stays in this village are close to zero, but so are the chances of him leaving before his apprentice trade expires, sure he might go visit his brother in the city, but nothing longer than a cycle or two. In that time I'll make sure he won't grow up to make my mistakes. I signed up at the age of ten became a porter and specialized so much with that in mind that I couldn't become a proper fighter and a scout was all I could manage. He'll be different. I'll make sure he gets his foundations built properly to support him. After all, if nothing else, he might be able to get a message to Luna when he makes it out in the world. Hatchet, what's this I hear about you and the kid keeping a whole deer for yourselves? The headman sneaks up on me as my mind wanders. You changed me to that scouting route and we both know it's tradition for hunters in training to keep their first kill. I answer back a little disgruntled about being questioned for no reason. He's not going to be a hunter. We already have too many of those around here, I need him to be a messenger. As such he has no claim on the spoils, his face is getting a bit redder, he always was good man though a bit greedy, he did look out for the best interest of the village, even if it did come at the expense of the individuals. I don't know about that boss man, kid got the tracking skill in one day and this morning he was working on his climbing, that with the bow skills running and stealth, sounds like a hunter to me, I put a bit of salt on his wound. After all, he does tend to play favorites as long as there is no detriment to the village and all the rest of the hunters are friends with his darling baby boy. He did what? Damn it, and he was the only option we had for a messenger for at least another year, I sure hope the old fool doesn't retire before we can get a new one trained, he mumbled under his breath as he started to walk away, oh, and before I forget you next trip out will again be a scouting mission, this time heading on the other side of the village. Need to make sure nothing from the deep forest started making its way towards us. The old hypocrite complained so much about me giving the kid a shot at being a hunter despite his own son having the skills to be a messenger, but no how could his precious boy be anything other than a merchant working to take his spot as headman, this despite him having the diplomatic skills of a skunk at court. Getting home I find myself going back through my old gear and mementos I have from my days as an adventurer. Sure we weren't the top, but we made it pretty high up there getting a gold badge and were almost qualified for a platinum one. The more I look through the more I regret how badly I had messed up during my apprentice phase and how I might not be retired out here in this backwater if I had taken more care and put in a lot more effort when I was young. Effort young Ajax was putting in hand over fist. I might as well start getting ready for this second scouting mission. It's not like food will be a problem for me, with the deer leg I prepped yesterday, I mumbled to Chip, my messenger pigeon that I kept for emergencies, keeping him secrete because pigeons didn't naturally travel to this part of the world and having one to deliver a message could be very important, even having one could be used to show off standing to visitors. Chip, Chip, he whined at me. Yes, yes, you big glutton, don't worry I won't forget to feed you, I tell him as I pass a small plate through the bars on the cage, and then sit back down near the trunk of my old gear. The light catches a small glint on a certain medallion, and I bring it out to reminisce. It was the last thing Luna gave to me, before she started her own healing clinic after returning from that godforsaken hunt. 
If you really insist on going take this, I owe you one so if you ever need anything remember you can always come to me, her worried eyes still reminding me of the only real friend I had left in this world. I guess twenty years is quite a long time. I should look into getting a message to her sooner rather than later, I'll just have Ajax deliver it, with that look in his eyes, no way he stays in a small village, like this one. I chuckle to myself as I feel myself drifting off to sleep, Chapter 21 over the weeks have seen a new routine settle in. Every four or five days I would join Hatchet in going on a hunt for game or just scouting. We weren't that lucky to find game on a scouting mission after that first time. That's not to say that our time was just spent walking around. He had me on high alert and also running drills of how to react to whatever could show up. Now with my level of strength all this basically amounted to something I could fight head on and he will just watch over me something that I could only let him keep busy while shooting arrows at and retreat. My first retreat option was climbing up a nearby tree, my second was running away, and my last was running by jumping from tree to tree, all depending on what we stumbled upon would be useful according to him. This along with a detailed explanation of the flora found in the forest and what it can be used for or what its presence means made the missions very enjoyable, we even found some rabbits and deer when hunting for food. On my day staying in the village I would go through my usual training in the mornings, practicing with all the weapons I knew how to use as well as my climbing. After that most of my day would be spent keeping up with the other skills I learned in the last three years as well as tending to my garden. My merchant skills were getting quite the workout thanks to my sister and Alana who decided to wait until after my spring finished next week. They seem to have already started making quite a bit of profit off the caravans that came in the village just by acting as middlemen between the caravan merchant and the village populace. The new addition to the menu that made it last that much longer was the chase as I called it, releasing a rabbit into the forest and after giving it a head start using my tracking skills to run and grab it. Hatchet found it funny the first time he found ass in the air with my hand up to my shoulder in a rabbit burrow but after I explained to him what I was doing his expression changed to an impressed one. You know that's not a bad idea, sure when you are chasing something you usually have time to look for tracks, but the ability to spot and read meaningful information from tracks when running could come in very handy, his words weren't empty, he even started to add fake tracks near the area, I let the rabbit loosen so I would not only have to identify the tracks, but also guess how long ago they were made. Hey kid, you ready for the scouting mission? Hatchet called out to me. Yeah, just got to go put this guy back in the cage, I said holding up the rabbit before I took off at a run towards my home. Hey mom, I said as I picked up my gear after putting the rabbit back. You're going already? Mom asked looking up from the shirt she was sewing back up for dad. Isn't it a bit early? Yeah, but apparently this scouting mission takes us a bit closer to the deep forest, so Hatchet said he wanted to make sure we were getting out of there before the light even starts to thin. Okay, but be careful out there. Just because something hasn't shown up around here doesn't mean it's not out there in the deep forest. Mom told me, the past few cycles of nothing happening to me letting her calm down, that being a hunter wasn't that dangerous. And she wasn't wrong. It's just that those things that could be out there was why we were going deeper in the first place. The game has been getting rarer as time passed and nothing was happening near the village so we had to investigate what could be affecting it from further out and if we needed to send a message to Les Sis in case something really was going on. What do you think we will find all the way out here? I asked Hatchet as we made our way deeper and deeper. What could have an effect on the game yet stay clear of the village? Lots of things could do it. We're not only out here to figure out what it is, but also look for sign if it is something bigger, and this is only a mild effect off it. What do you mean by that? Well when something big happens it also affects everything below it more or less, in the forest a big change deep inside could cause a group of hunters much less dangerous to move closer to the village and as a result we would share the same hunting grounds without actually running into each other. Aha! Uh -huh. Now that looks interesting, he exclaimed and started following a set of very hard to spot tracks that seemed very odd to me. He didn't mention anything about them and I couldn't put my finger on what made these tracks different from any other I have seen before. It didn't take long for us to reach a clearing with Hatchet leading the hunt, 
but the closer we got to whatever had made these tracks, the more these tracks felt odd to me somehow. The latest had a soft purple smoke lift from them. But since Hatch didn't mention it, I let it slide as well. There it is. Damn, kid, get up in a tree quietly. Now. His stern whisper leaves no room for argument, draw an arrow, but don't shoot unless it tries to run away, was the last thing he told me as he started circling to get a better angle. Getting up in the branches, I get my first glimpse of what we are hunting, seeming to be a slightly bigger than average wolf, but that's not what worries me, what does is that I get a clear reading from the wolf thanks to my mana sense skill. Hatchet shot an arrow at the wolf and then followed up with a charge, holding his axe in his hand. His surprise attack seems to have worked and he definitely had the upper hand, the wolf quickly realizing he was going to lose made a run for it. I slowly aimed knowing I would only have one shot before it got to the trees and my line of fire would be obscured. The arrow I released hit the back lack right in the join, sending the wolf crashing head first into the ground, letting Hatchet catch up and with one final swing he buried the axe in the skull of the beast. I quickly pulled up my stout window to see what had changed as I felt something right before I started climbing the tree. Name, Ajax. Level, 12. Experience, 2950-12100. Traits, Child Prodigy, Divine Witness. Health, 160-160. Mana, 260-260. Stamina, 250-250. Vitality, 16.27. Strength, 21.60. Endurance, 25.80. Dexterity, 20.90. Intellect, 36.68. Wisdom, 28.26. Mind, 26.87. Perception, 18.63. Stat points, 242. Skills, Common, Frowny Face Mathematics LVL 22, Stealth LVL 21, Drawing LVL 30, Athleticism LVL 20, Running LVL 22, Reading LVL 20, Writing LVL 20, Cooking LVL 20, Sewing LVL 20, Cleaning LVL 12, Haggling LVL 19, Gardening LVL 20, Axes LVL 29, Hammers LVL 21, Deception LVL 15, Sword LVL 10, Shield LVL 10, Bow LVL 10, Spear LVL 10, Throwing LVL 10, Persuasion LVL 10, Unarmed, Combat LVL 12, Knives 20, Skinning LVL 10, Tanning LVL 10, Dismantle LVL 10, Climbing LVL 5, Tracking LVL 4, Heat Resistance LVL 1, Uncommon, Frowny Face Meditation LVL 35, Sense Mana LVL 36, Expel Mana LVL 37, Sprinting LVL 13, Mining LVL 10, Lumberjack LVL 10, Smelting LVL 10, Blacksmithing LVL 10, Chanting LVL 10, Mana Farming LVL 10, Increase Price LVL 10, Lower Price LVL 10, Danger Sense LVL 1, Leatherworking LVL 10, Alchemy LVL 10, Mana Milling LVL 6, Precise, Cut LVL, 10, Precise, Blow, LVL, 10. Rare, Manipulate Mana LVL 15, Water Aspect Mana LVL 10, Fire Aspect Mana LVL 10, Air Aspect Mana LVL 10, Earth Aspect Mana LVL 10, Inject Mana LVL 13, Spot Weakness LVL 4, Residue Recognition LVL 1. New, Tracking, Plus, Mana Sense, Dash, Residue Recognition. Upgrades. Climbing 1-5. Tracking 1-4. Hmm, this information made me both giddy and relieved, I had gotten a new skill, and according to the new system I tried to implement, that apparently worked, my status would tell if any skills were used in the creation of my new ones. It took a load off to know that it hadn't been a mistake not to tell Hatchet the odd feeling the tracks had given me. Had I done so, I would have revealed that I could sense mana, and not only that I could even tell if mana had been used even after the effect was over. Chapter 22 What was different about this wolf? I questioned Hatchet, just because I knew the thing had mana didn't mean I knew much else about it. That was your first beast-type monster kid, he blandly answered as he started bagging the wolf to take back to the village, 
all my prior knowledge of games telling me monster parts would sell for quite a bit. Now while not all monsters have mana, all beast type ones do, and that separates the animals from the monster. Don't all monsters have mana? It would make sense that they would. Most do, but there are some that don't. A few insect type don't have mana. The same can be said about massive fish types that are fully based on size. Just because a monster doesn't have mana doesn't make them any less dangerous. Some fungus type monsters take control of other species and in doing so make them a lot stronger, turning into wolf type monsters with no mana. It is very important to make sure every time you fight a strong beast type monster that you didn't see use any mana that you check yourself for possible sign of infestation. This one here had some wind claws he used so we should be fine. If the rare type of controlling fungus that can access a previous mana connection got him we are dead anyway. That was a lot for me to process and I just stood there trying to absorb all the new information. Seeing me try to comprehend what he just said Hatchet carried on inspecting the clearing. Clearly he was looking for something specific. What are you searching for? Any sign of where the rest of the pack of this one might be, he said pointing at the wolf. They aren't solitaire creatures, few reasons why one as young as this would be alone, but I can't find any marks to single the presence of another. After twenty more minutes spent in the clearing, he determined that he was indeed a lone wolf. So, what now? We go back to the village with the wolf? No, a single wolf couldn't have caused all this, monster or not. We go a bit deeper now that we have a trail, to see if we can get a hint on what happened. The trip proceeded a lot slower than we had up to this point. We weren't taking any chances, with carelessness. Hatchet stopped right next to a mangled tree. Clearly something suspicious had happened to it, even I could tell that much. Fuck, we got to get out of here, I know what happened. A quiet harsh tone came out and we were both headed straight for the village. We didn't make it more than five steps before I caught on to why he was so on edge. The conspicuous tree was there to draw our attention and we had just ran into whatever had set up this ambush. The squeaks came from about five pony-sized rats. They all looked a lot like they would fit right in with four turtles to train in martial arts, but they all had different odd implements, hammers, axes, arrows all made of stone. Kobolds, keep clear of them, was all the advice Hatchet gave me as he moved faster than I have ever seen him charging the one with a staff in the back. I didn't have a chance to see what else he was doing as one of the kobolds, the one with two axes, came towards me. His small stature made him quick as I drew my sword and took the shield off my back, trying to create distance between us like Hatchet told me, but the little bugger was quick. I managed to parry the first swing and blocked the next two with my shield when something different happened. I felt the presence of magic around the kobold, but it was different than the wolf, where the wolf had constant magic pouring into his claws to give them an effect the kobold's magic came in small bursts, targeted at his feet, and I could see the earth move to help him get a better step. He darted off to the side and then the same thing happened again, this time the magic infusing into the axe. Its connection with my shield rang out in the forest with a bang. I could see where it the stone dented my shield without chipping at all, and my whole arm went numb from the force of the impact, hanging limply by my side with the shield out of the way. Knowing I wouldn't be able to stand up to another such blow, I went on the offensive, swinging my blade towards the thing's neck, only to have it intercepted. But that was something I expected as I switched my swing and managed to leave a sizable gash on its leg. Odd grayish blood pouring out followed by high-pitched screech. Thinking to press my advantage, I took pressed on the offensive looking to force it to put weight on the injured leg hoping it would trip, when I felt the same magic for around its axis once more, and when it met my blade the power knocks me off balance, the axe coming from my chest as I twist the sword to intercept it the power of the blow sending it skidding across the grass. The kobold raises its first axe once more looking to finish me off, but stumbles as he takes a step on his injured leg making the blow fall short, combined with my own fall backwards, to dodge it only leaves a small cut on my forearm. Its beady eyes stare at me, promising death, as his other axe is raised ready to remove my head. His forehead exploding with an arrowhead emerging took me by surprise, brain scattering on my boots as it fell to the floor. Looking up I see Hatchet in the middle of four dead kobolds, a bow in his hand, as he quickly dashed to me. Not bad kid, I didn't expect you to stand up to a kobold before you spent any stat points, 
even if was just about to brain you, but his grin fell off his face as his eyes landed on the small cut on my arm. Did you get that when falling? All amusement was gone from his voice. No he nicked me with his axe, before tripping on his wounded leg I answer him, proud that while I lost I at least managed to land a solid blow, it hardly hurts at all. It doesn't matter whether or not it hurts. Cobalt used poisons from underground on their weapons, he clearly didn't know how to help me as he started going over the corpses, I suspect looking for an antidote. I did the only thing I could to start sucking out the poison, before plunging my own knife into the cut to make it a bit deeper. The next step was the one I knew would hurt as I retreated behind a tree and put my other hand over the wound focusing on bringing forth my fire magic and cauterizing the area hoping that will clean up the poison. I wasn't prepared for the pain that came with it and I let out a sharp cry of pain, followed by grabbing a stick and lighting it on fire, in case Hatchet tried to figure out how I cauterized the wound. In a flash Hatchet was in front of me inspecting both the stick and my wound. Not a bad plan, since he only nicked you at the end, sucking out anything on the surface, then deepening the wound and burning it all should limit exposure. How did you think to do all that, clearly skeptical of the approach he hadn't taught me? My brother's lover, Kate, is a healer for the guards, and gave me a few tips on how to deal with all different type of injuries when I was resting between rounds of my brother training me for once I didn't have to lie. I didn't mention that this particular method was for healers who could then speed up the healing of the burn and resistance to the poison with their magic. Fine, let me wrap it up and let's head to the village I know. We need to get a message to Les Sis. This isn't something our village can deal with. He made a plan, though the skeptical expression told me my use of magic might not have gone fully under the radar as he started wrapping up my arm. What has happened? I asked, trying to move to a different topic. Most likely one of the kobold clans in the mountain had a population surplus so the chief sent one his offsprings with a part of the population to get their own clan started. When there is no more space in the mountain, they travel through the forest, looking for another series of tunnels to occupy, he answered while finishing up my bandage, and we both took off at a run towards the village, though not before I grabbed the quiver of stone arrows and stowed it in my pack. This was just one of the scouting parties. There should be another three or four hundred of the rats deeper in the forest and among them some higher levels, nothing a small village can deal with. The good part is that it will most likely be five cycles before they move close enough that the village enters their hunting grounds since kobolds are notoriously slow to move outside their tunnels plenty of time for the baron to dispatch a contingent of knights and soldiers to go deal with them. While listening to him I also kept an eye on my health bar seeing it slowly drop lower at a very slow pace 73-130 when we left the ambush site to 72 now. Telling me that I hadn't gotten all of the poison with my little self-immolation trick. It was then that I felt myself receive a new skill, poison resistance LVL1, that I figured I would be okay, and that the longer this poison was in my system the higher this new skill would level. Chapter 23 the trip back to the village was quiet as we were trying to get there as fast as we could without attracting any more attention to ourselves than we already had from running through the place. My mind wandered back to the magic the kobold was using and how he used quick bursts of earth to help his speed and strengthen his weapons when attacking without using a continuous infusion like the wolf had. Not paying attention I crashed straight into Hatchet, who had suddenly slowed down, probably spotting something I had missed. I know you just got out of your first fight kid, but pay attention to your surroundings, he didn't sound very upset, but his voice was still firm, conveying the message that in this forest I was one moment of carelessness away from death, with my stats, here chew on these they should help your body fight off the poison, he shoved some leaves he ripped off the plant into my hand. I put one in my mouth, and instantly tried to spit it out, the bitter taste overwhelming me. My eyes squeezed shut, but I felt a hand over my mouth, keeping the foul leaf in. Yeah, yeah, I know it tastes like the sole of your boot, but I told you to keep away from the kobolds, so think of it as your punishment for failing, he lightly chuckled, without letting me go. Don't swallow it, just chew on it, for a few minutes, then you can spit it out. I nodded, and he took his hand off my mouth. Ugh, if for no other reason than to never have to taste this again, I'll find a way to level this poison resistance skill, clearly trusting Hatchet, with my new skill, was a good idea. I didn't want him to think of me as dead weight, and sharing my new skill would at least build some more trust between us, 
I definitely didn't just tell him about it so I wouldn't have to chew on another leaf, definitely not. You got poison resistance out of it, eh? He scratched his beard as we started moving again, a small file of smoke visible in the distance showing we were close to the village. Well at least all the pain of that burn on your arm won't be for nothing then. Why did you go for the cobalt in the back, was it because of the staff? I asked him, seeing as we were so close to the village, there was less danger in talking while running. Nope, had nothing to do with the staff, he had a container of mosquitoes on his belt, clearly he was some kind of disease magic user, definitely something I didn't want you to have to deal with even if he was low enough level for it not to pose much danger to me. This obviously surprised me as I had thought the gem on the staff had marked him as a magic user that needed to be dealt with. Then what was with the gem on his staff I asked him, bringing the orb I picked off the end of the staff, thinking it had some value. That is most likely an enchanted object, to help him control the insects better, but it's by no means required for it. Not good for much, highest price you'll get for it will be from an engraver, who already knows how to carve the same rune just so his competition can't grab it, and that's if you go to a city he told me clearly aware that he was stomping on my hopes of it being something valuable. Now head on home and go to sleep, you still have poison in your body and the adrenaline is about to run out and you'll crash. I'll go inform the headman of the kobolds, he lightly pushed me in the direction of my house. At home, I found nobody in the house, but by the time I entered I was already feeling dead tired so I just grabbed a few pieces of fruit to eat and headed to bed to crash. The sun's rays woke me up the next day looking a lot later than I usually woke up. A cold bowl of soup on the nightstand by the bed told me that my parents found out what had happened to me and let me sleep last night. I drank down the soup and got up to go to my usual training, even if I was to start a bit later today I was feeling fine the burn on my arm reacting well to the healing I used right before going to sleep. As I exited my room I found my parents as well as Judy and Alana all sitting down at the kitchen table, their eyes on me as I exited my room. Morning I sheepishly say before trying to extricate myself out of the situation I'll go get started on my exercises. I didn't make more than a step for the door when mom cut me off pulling out a chair for me, sit. She then filled my plate with food and continued as I sat down for breakfast. Your father and I have decided that you will join your sister for her trip to Les Sis. What why? I quickly try to think of a way out. We're not saying that you can't be a hunter, but with the kobolds so close, we decided this is the best for you. As such you'll make the headman happy by playing the role of messenger and let him think you might be turning to that career after your experience with the kobolds. This also presents a perfect opportunity for you to visit Tom and Kate and we both agreed that you will not be going back in the forest before you unlock your stat points and have a better chance to defend yourself her explanation calmed me down quite a bit and I found myself agreeing with her. The plan sounded well thought out. It not only got me off of the headsman's shit list but also gave me a chance to see what a city was like and to visit Tom and Kate. I wasn't thrilled about the lost time, but on our way back Hatchet did mention that he would most likely have to go without me for a while anyway, so whether I did my training on the road or here it didn't matter much. Oh come on little brother, you could at least make it look like spending time with me isn't a punishment Judy managed to make me crack a smile at that as I inhaled the food in front of me, clearly a lot hungrier than I thought. I didn't say anything though I defended myself against the allegations. You looked like they just told you to go help clean the horse stalls, she fired back not letting me get a solid footing in so I did the only smart thing left to me, I kept my mouth focused on eating and conceded this round. You can go do your training for the day, but since you're leaving in the morning with the caravan make time for tonight to have a chat with me, after all you'll have your stat points unlocked on this trip and I need to talk to you about it, dad said while getting up to head back to the forge after his lunch. I nodded my head, stuffing all the remaining food in my mouth, and also headed for my room to grab a new pair of clothes seeing as I was only wearing a pair of pants, realizing how badly I messed up my initial excuse of training while wearing this. Quickly changing and heading out the door, my sister and mother were still sitting at the table, talking with Alana, probably something to do with their reason for the trip as merchants in training, but all the while Alana's eyes followed me out the door. 
Training today started differently, with me taking out one of the arrows I looted from the dead kobolds yesterday and giving myself a very small scratch, hoping to raise my poison resistance and as a way to progress my vitality along with the rest of my stats. I also started chewing on one of the leaves Hatchet gave me yesterday just to be sure I wasn't doing anything stupid and then started my to go through my usual training. Looking to train up you poison resistance Hatchet announced from behind me as I was just about done with the last set of climbing exercises. He was coming out of the forest, clearly he hadn't taken the day off like I had. That's a good way to get yourself killed, just where did you stick this arrow? His voice was cold, but I could see signs of worry in his eyes. Just a light scratch here, I showed him the thing line I made with the arrow close to the wound from yesterday, and I chewed through about four of those leaves you gave me yesterday. His expression warmed some when hearing that, but his voice didn't. Next time you get it in your head to experiment with things that can kill you, how about running it past me first? I tried to, but I couldn't find you, and since I am leaving with my sister first thing in the morning for less sis I didn't want to miss out on that much time leveling up this poison resistance, especially if we have to deal with kobolds again later, I answered back to him, though the looking for him part wasn't exactly true save for a quick glance on my way to my training spot. You and I won't be dealing with the kobolds, level 30 and above soldiers led by at least a few level 50s will be cleaning out the kobold problem. Don't be in such a hurry, to get yourself killed, he shook his head, I'll have a new leather chest piece made for you from the wolf's hide by the time you come back. That with the stat points unlocking, should help keep you on even footing with whatever we find in the forest after the soldiers clear out the kobolds. That was all he said to me as he headed towards the headman's house probably to give a report of his mission, and I headed back home to have a conversation with my father. Chapter 24 On my way towards the house, I made a quick stop by the alchemist's place. After all the amount of increase the poison resistance skill would gain would be too specialized if it all came from a single type of poison, so it was best that I would get some recipes before I left on the two-week journey to Les Sis. Evening I greeted as I entered the shop slash lab. Ajax, what are you doing here? I thought we agreed alchemy wasn't your calling. He didn't seem that surprised to see me despite his words. Was it the encounter with the kobolds that made you rethink past paths? It isn't so much that I am rethinking past paths, but Hatchet told me that kobolds are known for using poisons on their weapons. So I was wondering if perhaps you would know some mild poisons I could make with local herbs, or the ones you know I grow in my little backyard garden. I decided to go with the straight approach. After all this man could from the sound if a potion was bubbling wrong, I wasn't about to see if he could tell when a person lies. Poisons, hmm, nasty business, but for a hunter I suppose that it would fit. Sure, I can show you a hemorrhagic one as well as a mild nerve toxin, you can even get a more powerful strain of the nerve toxin with some of those plants you grow. He stumbled over to a cupboard and started taking out beakers as well as a few dried plants. A few hours of carefully learning how to make the poisons with step-by-step -step instructions, and notes I was stepping outside, happy to escape the moist warm air that permeated the shop following my lesson. Just remember, these are weak poisons if you want them to have any effect on something like that wolf hatchet carried back to the village it will take a lot more than what you can lace on a blade or arrow, maybe if you made it with some of those plants of yours the wolf would start feeling numb after 10 seconds in the area around a cut, but the downside is if you hurt yourself, you'll they'll work on you. The alchemist sent me off with a final warning just as the last rays of sunlight were drawing to a close. With everything ready for my trip tomorrow, I headed home ready to see what wisdom dad had for me prior to my stat points unlocking. The pale light of the candles flickered from the wind tunnel when I opened the door. For once it was only mom dad and Judy. It wasn't so much that Alana spent all her time at our house as it was that she and Judy were inseparable with them spending time together both here and at her house, something the headman and dad both disapproved of, but they both quickly changed their tune when they doubled their starting coin pouch in one cycle after they started joining the merchants for round trips to Les Sis. Getting in late there Ajax, are you still feeling weak? You shouldn't push yourself so hard after a fight mom was already out of her chair and dragging me over to sit and have dinner. No, no, I just spent the last few hours learning how to make some poisons. My most recent encounter with them showed me they aren't to be underestimated. I assured her while holding up my ARM to make a point. Is that why you sell so bad? 
Judy wouldn't let something like this get past her, despite the annoyed look I flashed her. What I'm not saying is that it's a problem, I'm saying you better wash before we leave tomorrow. What did he tell you about poisons? Dad questioned clearly, a bit surprised I was leaning back towards alchemy. The rest of dinner revolved around me explaining to them the lesson I just received. Even Judy seemed interested though, that was more because now she had a good excuse, in her mind, to overcharge alchemists buying these ingredients for making dangerous substances. After dinner, Dad pulled me off to have the talk with me. We sat down alone around the table. Now usually this is something we would discuss the night before you experience your child trade ending so that it is fresh in your mind, but since that is a luxury we do not have doing it now we'll have to do. Was all he said before he opened his status up to me. Name, Sam. Level, 38. Experience, 10,000 slash 75800. Traits. Health, 2700 slash 2700. Mana, 250 slash 250. Stamina, 600 slash 1400. Vitality, 270. Strength, 260. Endurance, 140. Dexterity, 190. Intellect, 25. Wisdom, 25. Mind, 25. Perception, 45. Stat points, 0, skills, frowny face hammers LVL, 65, blacksmithing LVL, 57, precise blow LVL, 39, axes LVL, 30, mining LVL, 25, running LVL, 20, reading LVL, 10, heat resistance LVL, 11, writing LVL, 5. Now I will advise you as my father advised me. Despite the fact that you have no mana and that you will most likely never have mana regardless of how much above 11 you intellect wisdom and mind stats or you should probably push them up to 25, as that is where it is believed that the bonus to things like memory enhancement and quick thinking and other such limits are. It probably seems like a big investment now and I am not saying that these are your first points to put in, just that these are something you are looking to have by the end of your apprentice or a year after. It was the same speech he had given my brother, but that was not something I should be pointing out seeing as I should have been too young to remember it the first time around. His status had remained much the same after all these years, having gained only three levels, and his blacksmithing skill having increased by a few levels. Next I will tell you something about stat point. You see while they may only be affecting you in term of full points there is such a thing as partial points. When investing a free point into one of your stats all you do is bring it to the next highest number he started with something I had already guessed, but it was still good information nonetheless. Now the apprentice trait will give you a 10% increase to all points spent, but this means that if you spend the points one by one you will lose all of this bonus, you want to spend points while under the apprentice trait in multiples of 10 as such you will gain that extra point now this was crucial. Spending the points incorrectly would have meant that not only do I waste the partial points I had worked so hard for, but also the bonus from the trait. Next you should try to plan out what you plan to increase to how much over a longer period of time, usually a few levels ahead. You see the apprentice trait will make it easy to increase your stats without spending points, but to do this, you will need to not increase them with free points for a while, so you don't just round up the attributes you worked hard for. As such you should spend your initial points favoring one stat that you will focus on and then not spend points to increase it for the next few levels, as such you might be able to push it one or two points up for free. Do you understand what I told you? He asks, a bit uncertain, clearly this is as far as he prepared his speech. Yeah, I understand I answer leaving aside one of the questions I had about all this that had been bugging me ever since Judy showed me what the apprentice trait did. He looked visibly relieved. Maybe Tom had asked some questions he wasn't ready for and he had expected the same of me, but I didn't want to put anything more on him and any other questions I would have I could bother Judy with so I headed off to wash myself before turning in for the night. Since tonight I wasn't as tired as yesterday, I just stayed in bed spending a lot of my mana repeatedly casting Elsin off to heal the burn on my forearm. Most of the discomfort was gone and the wound looked nearly healed when I reapplied my bandage after the wash.
I would of course keep it in place for another few weeks, but had to make sure to take it off, before we reached Kate, as I was quite sure that she would be able to figure out why my large burn had healed so well in only two weeks' time. As sleep claimed me, I was thinking about all the opportunities one would have in the city as I will most likely already be done with the child trait before we reached it unless we made very good time heading there. Chapter 25 Me Judy and Alana were on the way to the market. As soon as we turned the corner, we could see the caravan packing up and getting ready to move on to the return trip to Les Sis. The three of us must have looked comical, me being quite a bit taller and more muscled than both of them, but they both carried bigger bags on their back than me, something not all that surprising since they must have had strength stats easily two or three times my own. Ajax is good to see you again. I have mostly packed up, but seeing how much you brought, I'm sure I can get some things unpacked for you, the merchant who usually buys my herb greeted me with a sleazy smile, his eyes fixed to my luggage. I'm not here to sell this time, going to pay a visit to my brother and less sis, so I'll try to sell these in the city, no need to pay a transportation fee if I'm going there anyway. I answered back not looking to give away the fact that I was on this trip, because my parents wanted me to be away from the village for a while. He must not have liked that answer, because his smile soured, and he got back to work without another word. Wow, that ruined his mood quick, he must have been making bank on those plants of yours, when we get to the city I'll show you where you can sell them without getting ripped off, my sister reassured me while Alana was talking to the owner of the cart we were boarding for the next two weeks. It didn't take long for us to get going, and since most of the merchants knew me as the impossible kid who always wanted to argue and not buy anything, from my time raising my skills on them, word that I was along for a visit to Lessis spread quickly, and I was promptly ignored by all. So what are going to do for the next two weeks? I asked my sister thirty minutes into the trip already bored from just sitting in a slow-moving wagon. We have to stop on the way where we will probably spend a day, but other than that, this is what the trip will be like all the way there. If you want to stretch your legs you can walk beside the caravan or try to find something in the forest off the trail. Just don't wander, because nobody is going to wait around or look for you. Her response told me that she saw through my boredom, but her warning made it clear that I shouldn't be too far away. I took off my bags and hopped off heading towards the woods a bit out of sight to begin my training, or more specifically to try to recreate what that cobalt had been doing with mana. I tried to focus the mana release into feet to start off with after all that must have been easier than doing so with a weapon. A few hours and most of my mana pool later, I had made no progress on actual results, the only thing I could be sure of was that my mana seemed different from the cobalt's. Not just in how it had affected him, but even in the way it felt. Deciding that there wasn't much more I could do, and that I should probably return to the caravan soon I decided to empty out my mana pool with my usual exercises so that the mana exhaustion would let me sleep away the time on this trip. While going through my usual creation of fire, water, and air, everything was ordinary, but when I got to my earth aspect, my mana suddenly appeared a lot like the cobalt's to my senses. I quickly decided to try to augment my steps with earth mana, to see if I could make myself move faster. The first thing I noticed when I attempted that was the feeling I recognized for getting a new skill. Sadly I didn't get a chance to enjoy the feeling as instead of giving me a more sure footing or increasing my speed I felt the ground instead give way forming a small crater under my foot leading me to tripping and falling on my face. The fall was other than embarrassing and not something I could even pay attention to in the aftermath of my success. Sure I didn't get the effect I wanted but the activation felt similar to that of the cobalt, mana being released and quickly used to imbue something for an instant. While I was very much looking forward to training my newfound path in using mana, the fact that a small patch of unsure footing landed on in the dirt made it abundantly clear I need to go get some rest and let my mana recover. Returning to the caravan and hopping back in the cart and getting settled to sleep I noticed my sister's face suddenly inches from my own. Where the hell were you and what were you doing? Her tone sounded angry. I tried to hunt around to see if there was anything near the road, as well as practice my tracking skill, I responded to the impromptu questioning. Well next time, how about you pop back every two hours or so, I was this close to going to look for you, she said, picking a twig from my hair. Okay, okay, I'll do that tomorrow, I said lying down to sleep, 
In the same position that I saw the night crew were doing knowing I will sleep for quite a bit longer tonight, restoring my mana pool and meditating after I wake to fill up the rest of the way before starting my new training sessions tomorrow. When I woke up in the morning it was still fully dark, but I could feel something pressing down on my left side, a small glint of moonlight revealed that to be Alana snuggled up to me. I wasn't going to complain about a hot girl cozying up to me, but then reined in my hormones and started meditating looking to be training my augmentation in a few hours. Alana moving is what finally broke me out of my meditation, there now being a bit more light I looked around and saw most people were waking up even the day driving crew. I don't get how they do it, sleep all day, drive all night and then when we get to a village, they are all ready to trade I comment looking and the sleepy merchants swapping places with their tiered looking night counterparts. While they swap every stop, if you were driving at night on a way to a stop you're driving during the day leaving the stop, that's how most partners do it. Alana explained it to me. Yeah unless you're the newbie, they are teaching, in which case you get all the night shifts, my sister, groaned awake, from opposite me. I got lucky, me and Alana joined together and we got to split the nights for the first three years. I don't know how people can drive all night and expect to be able to learn something the next day. While she complained a lot and didn't seem to take things seriously both Judy and Alana showed promise, with the merchant organization they had joined cutting their training days short from five years to three and signing them up as low-level merchant duo. No doubt that rare skill of hers was paying dividends and I suspected Alana had one of her own to keep up with her. Well I'm going to see if I can't catch something fresh for breakfast I hopped out of the cart and made for the woods, my thoughts with all sorts of different ideas to change how I manipulated my mana. Ideally, I would learn how to get any desired effect, but I wasn't kidding myself that my progress was going to be slow.